Native women are, are not. Is that the reason you believe it? What's the, so what I'm trying to get at is, what is your criteria to judge between the two teachings? Oh yeah, what he says. What he says, okay. But it's not, by the way, that's one. No, no I understand, I understand. So if what he says <coughs> contradicts with what God has said, do you take his word or the word of God? Well, you're, uh, obviously what God said. Okay. But you're obviously going to claim that the Quran is the word of God. No, no, so this is why I asked you the criteria. Yeah. So for me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, the criteria that I use for what is right or what is wrong are not my personal inclinations. Same. Because they will be based upon my nurture, my nature, how, where I was born, how I was brought up, what my culture is. If I was born 200 years ago, I may have a different understanding of things, right? What you're saying is kind of incorrect because you will never be away from your personal disposition. So you will never so, be away from, you will so, never... So you claim that like, you claim just now that like, it's, you don't base your belief in God or that belief from your own. Yes. And you defer it. Yes. Well, you will always refer back to your disposition anyway. No, not necessarily. So it's an incorrect statement. It's no. like the belief of the objective world. No, no, so the, let me clarify. The belief of the objective world is subjective let, by its let, nature. Let me clarify you know my point. So understanding that my views are subjective, I'm not going to use them as a criteria to judge the validity of something. And I'm not going to use any saint or any individual to dictate to me or to tell me which one is worthy to follow or to accept. I'm going to go to the one that created me from my perspective, obviously, right? And I'm going to accept whatever the creator says in terms of what is valid or invalid, what is just or unjust, what is fair or unfair, what is correct or incorrect. I don't disagree with okay. that. So, so therefore, what I would then say, respectfully, is I would look at the Christian faith based upon the Bible, and I would look at the Islamic faith based upon the Quran, and then I would look at and I would scrutinize both of the revelations to arrive at a conclusion as to which one is from God and which one has been preserved. And if I arrive at the conclusion, if I arrive at the conclusion from my perspective that the Quran is from Allah and it has been preserved then for me those teachings are perfectly fine would, would is that reasonable from your perspective but I don't I think you're I think in that methodology there are a lot of assumptions made okay for example the revelation that this is the word of God yes someone has to tell you that that's the word of God not necessarily you're right at the same problem no not necessarily I think there are, I don't know if you've looked at the objective reasons as to why we believe that the revelation of the Quran is a miracle and outside the capacity of human beings. Are you aware of what, what those things are? The, uh, inimi the uh, inimitability challenge of the Quran yeah, but being it's, one. But that's not a difficult thing. It's not? Do you know anybody who has equaled or bettered the Quran and the general consensus is that the challenge has been met? I mean, I mean, look, I mean... You speak Arabic, right? A little bit. Uh, in Lebanon, they speak Arabic, right? Yeah. We have a, lo well, so we have a local dialect. If the inimitability challenge of the Quran had been met by Arab speakers and they published a work and in fact Allah says, produce just one chapter like it, that's three verses. There are already. Okay, so where where can I find these works? Gospels. Uh, and who agrees unanimously, Christian and non-Christian academics, that the challenge has been met? I mean, that's a challenge you're placing, but there is like the Quran, and, and in my opinion, the Gospels yield greater fruit. No, no. I, I, the inimitability challenge is a very specific challenge. Yeah. And of language. Okay, I produce another one, the Bible. I yeah. mean, not the, sorry, the Gospels. But what I'm saying to you is, Allah says, and bring your witnesses, i.e. non-Muslim and Muslim, come together, come to an agreement that yes, this, is, this challenge has been met. 
I mean, I just, well, I believe that the Gospels met the challenge, and I don't agree with the presumption what, what of the is, challenge. What anyway. is it? I just said there's lots of views. In fact, trying to very find the conversation. But your, when you started, what you said was that something didn't feel right to you. That this was earthly, yeah. and therefore that didn't feel right to me. Then you said that you can't use your disposition because your disposition is flawed. True. Yeah. So that means whether something is, whether something feels right to you or not, is irrelevant. Well, the, the reality like is you not, said, the reality is not determined by your feelings. Like you said, we ought to defer to to the Creator and also those around Him. So, so you're, you're jumping ahead. Well, no, you defer yeah. to the Creator, and that's what I did. No, no. So you, well, you've jumped. So we're we're starting from the foundation and we're building up the argument. I want you to, on every stage, give your position. So, my criteria is, so I'll tell you. Yeah. So, there's what the person says, and the signs that accompany the person. And it's not just that, but also the manner in which the person lived. All those things come at the same time. You have the manner in which they lived, what they said, and the signs that accompany them. Those are my criteria. So, the, so give me those criteria again. Uh, the signs that accompany the person, the manner in which they lived, and what they had to say. Okay. And, you, and where did you get this criteria from? Ah, this is, uh, well, this one is my own. Yes. But you can't trust what you, your personal disposition, you said. I, I know. But we have to make educated guess at one point, right? Oh. That's what faith is. Ah, hey, hey, oh, this is a difference between you. This is a difference between a Christian and a Muslim. I don't we agree. Don't, you have faith in the I, Quran. I'm explaining. I'll explain. So we don't believe because of faith upon feelings. So we, so I'll give you the basic assumption. So reality is not determined by your personal disposition. If there is someone who can do miracles or whatever that might be, it's insufficient for me to accept them in any authority as someone speaking from God. If there is someone who's living in the middle of a jungle in a cave, uh, eating raspberries uh, on one leg, but then how? And, I'm explaining. I'm explaining. I'm, let me explain the thing. And this, and they're being, and they said they're very pious and they love everybody. Insufficient as a criteria. It, now, in terms of what they say, you what you have to clarify is that what do you mean by what they say? What is that? What they say about how to experience the world. So, give an example. Oh, it's well, I can give you an example, but the gist of it is, it, the purpose of all of it is, like I said, to build virtue and to kill the evil in order to gain entry to heaven. Because before God, there can be no sin. So where did you where did you get this criteria from? This is Christian. He basically confirmed the Christian theology. So if you're helping me as a non-Christian understand the validity of your position. But by the way, I want to go back to saying what you said. I did it based on feelings. Yeah. Not true. I did not do it based on feelings. Yeah. I placed criteria. All those things at the same time. Yeah, I understand. But but you said. But I said, where did you get this criteria from? It's my own determination. Yes based on like, I determined to use this criteria. Uh, this, is a, this is the base now. Now, okay, let me ask you, what's your criteria? Okay, I'll come to that. But what, you're, you, what you can't do in response to my question is asking the question back. I could come to the criteria, but first we have to establish the, do you understand what I'm saying? But you're not giving me, I said my criteria, you're... I understand, and what I'm doing is I'm analyzing the validity of your criteria in my eyes. Based on, exactly. Oh, no, wait, wait, I'll come to it. Come. Based on one, your eyes. No, no, one second. The point here is this, You're, you said that this position is invalid. Uh, no, that I didn't was, say that. You said earlier on. Let's say it's invalid. Invalid? What you is it? You said you can't use your disposition. Well, because your disposition is flawed. I'm saying you're claiming I'm using my disposition. And you are saying that in your case, you're not appealing well, to your disposition. I haven't said anything about myself. Okay, then please tell me okay. the criteria you use. So uh, all we were, all I was trying to do, because it become a bit defensive, is understand, bad, so. the, the, understand the, where you're coming no, from. I, I asked him for the conversation. He's a nice, he's a really nice guy. He was sure. listening to. And by the way, afterwards we go for a shawarma. I like shawarma. So if you want to join us, you're more than welcome. And we, uh, on our, on, as our guest. So I was, no, no, I was no, interested no. in this discussion because uh, the criteria you gave were it didn't. This, this seemed very earthly. Yeah. And then you said it was. It was the, the criteria, then you gave your criteria, comes from your disposition. 
You also just said your disposition is not insufficient. And then you, so what you seem to be deferring to is any, anybody who is uh, what you would consider to be Authority. doing things that are good, saying things that are good, and what was the other aspect of it? Do, um, doing some sort of miraculous type of events around them. So, yeah, yeah. Well, at the end, of the, these are signs to support what the person has to say. By the way, you know, we didn't start the conversation properly. What's your name? Karim. Karim Abbas. Imran. Nice to meet you, Abbas. Imran. Imran, good to meet you. Likewise. Uh, so the problem with having uh, signs and wonders is that there are many false people. I agree. Who can do signs and I wonders. agree with that. So signs and, and, I'm, and I'm just hashing out the criteria. So for us, signs and wonders is not one of them. Well, we have the well, we have the tradition to tell us, like from where, like which signs are good, which are bad. Usually from the occult. In the occult, yeah, mir miraculous looking things can happen, but they are of the evil source. I mean, this has to do with usually it's sacrificing something, and the worst thing you do is sacrifice a child, human sacrifice. Yeah. Like, and that is like knowledge of the occult, and usually that like, well, we're taught that that's designed to hurt God. It, it's to please the demons, so demons do whatever you ask them to. Well, the anyway, human, a, human sacrifice. No, well, ab abortion usually. Oh, abortion. Yeah, it's like the will, the sacrificing of an innocent soul. And so, uh, what was I going with this? You're Something to do. Oh yeah, ab oh about like bad miracles and good miracles. Yeah. Well, if if the miracle is associated with that, you can be certain it's from the dark side, because we know from the angelic world. I mean, all have the ability to do these things. So, yeah, it can either be heavenly or it can be from the dark. So, anyway, I'm just telling you church tradition. Okay. So, when, when you're talking to me and you're talking about human sacrifice being demonic, in my mind, and I'm being very honest with yeah, you, Jesus. that's the only thing going through my mind. Yeah, but it's the, it's the sacrifice of someone innocent. Let me explain. Yeah. Let me explain. So, human sacrifice is abhorrent. The Old Testament states this. God curses the pagan nations for carrying out human sacrifice. Yeah. But at the same time, Jesus did that. Yeah. You're talking about sacrificing of a human being as your mechanism of salvation. Yeah. Well, so for me, when I hear this, I don't know how to reconcile see, those two things together. But the difference there is that Jesus, like, he he did it of his own accord, though, with in himself, highlighting. Yeah. Humility, love, and all the virtues you can imagine. What do you mean of his own accord? Basically, of his. I mean, we know he performed miracles. He could have not been crucified. But. Did he ask to not be crucified? Uh, no, he didn't. I know what you're going to refer to that part where it's like. Uh, like uh, if you could just cut cup. pass. Yeah, it's. Uh, well, all other times, he knew that the Son of Man had to be, uh, was going to be delivered up. He knew that the whole time. But that Psalm 22, it's like, uh, no, as I will, but as you will. It's one of the prayers. So that, it's not so Psalm 22, it's another Psalm. So if, if he says, uh, every, everything is possible with you, he's talking to the Father. And if it's possible, remove this cup from me. Yeah? So there's two statements there. In, in, First in, of all, in, in everything is possible. 